This is part two of the Steam Deck review. Last time we talked about the hardware as well as playing Steam games on the Steam Deck, as well as the Steam Deck's interface and whatnot. Today we leave the Steam walled garden. We go beyond Steam. We play Epic games, GOG games, heck, we even emulate. And I know you want to hear all about that. In the previous video, we've given our thoughts on the Steam Deck, more specifically, the base form of the Steam Deck, playing all of your Steam games and the Steam interface. So if you want our thoughts on that, be sure to check out that video first. Because today, this video is all about the desktop mode, as well as playing non-Steam games and emulation. Some people call Steam a walled garden, and while that might be true to some extent, the fact of the matter is that Valve allows you to go outside of this walled garden without any sort of modifications required. And of course, this requires you to brave the Steam Deck desktop. If you're familiar with the Linux desktop, then you should have no issue adapting to the Steam desktop. I mean, it just uses KDE Plasma. Steam OS itself is an Arch-based Linux distro with some major, major differences. The first of which is that it's an immutable OS, meaning by default, you cannot modify the system partition. You can disable read-only, though it's highly inadvisable unless you're an expert in the Linux world. If you're looking to write tutorials on the Steam Deck, I would highly advise you to figure out how to do things without having to mess with the system partition. It's also worth mentioning that any modification to the system partition will be wiped upon installing a new update from Steam OS. So yeah, there's that too. This means you can't use Pac-Man or the Arch user repository for anything. At least not by default. As for the regular non-Linux user, the Linux neophyte, you'll find that KDE Plasma seems very similar to a certain operating system that you maybe have been using your entire life. For the most part, you can just use the Steam Deck as a regular old PC. And for some desperate college students, this may be the best laptop they can get at the price. I'm going to tell you right now though that this will be useful in a pinch, but if you need some serious work done and you've got the cash to spare, I would just recommend getting a laptop. Because if you're looking to do some actual work, like actual photo editing or even typing, you're gonna spend more money on peripherals. There's just no way in hell that you're gonna type out a doctoral thesis on your Steam Deck trackpads. Unless, you know, someone wants to prove me wrong. And the only proof I would accept is if they sat down and typed out their essay from start to finish using just the trackpads and the trackpads alone painstakingly typing out every single word using the trackpad. So yes, this is a serviceable desktop, and if you need a computer in a pinch, this'll do okay. What I would not recommend is playing games in desktop mode, especially if you value the Steam Deck's UI's features, such as the ability to change TDP and clock speeds and whatnot. That stuff doesn't carry over in desktop mode. Now let's talk about getting non-Steam applications on here. So there's a common misconception that's been going around that you can only play Steam games on the Steam Deck. I understand where they're coming from because that's just the norm with every other console that's ever existed. But the ultimate truth is that that's not even remotely true. You can get multiple third-party applications from elsewhere. Heck, you can even play third-party titles from different storefronts if you so desired. So first, let's talk about flat packs. You can find flat packs in the Discover app, and this is Valve's official recommended way of installing applications on your Steam Deck. You just open the application up, search for your application, press install, it's installed, and then you can launch it from there. This is also where you'll find a lot of emulators as well as must-have programs like Flatseal and Lutris, which we'll discuss in a later video. And it's just that easy. It's like downloading an app from the App Store on your phone. You can also go beyond the Flatpak and download app images as well. Downloading an app image off the internet is the equivalent of downloading an EXE file off the internet for Windows. And of course, occasionally you can just download programs off the internet that aren't flat packs or app images as well. Of course, developers may not package the dependencies required for these programs, so you should pay close attention to what developers want you to install on your device, and then realize that you can't use Pac-Man to install dependencies, so you can't use that program. It's kind of a mess, which is why I recommend sticking to flat packs and app images, but I know why you guys are really here. You're here because you want to see me talk about emulators. Almost every major emulator that exists has a native Linux version except for Simu. And even Simu's getting a Linux version at some point. 
There isn't really a whole lot to say about emulation besides the fact that emulation is a perfect use case for the Steam Deck. There's already some 50,000 games on Steam that you could be playing on your Steam Deck, but added emulation and the library jumps exponentially. Now, I'm not saying you can play every game ever made on this device, no, no, no. But playing almost every console before the PS4 and Xbox One generation is pretty wild. The hard part though is setting up emulators by yourself, which we'll discuss in a future video because that deserves its own video. If you're playing retro retro titles, like really old titles, I mean it's a no-brainer. Most modern computers nowadays can run those with relative ease. But emulation performance for modern systems? Well, it's surprisingly good. To this day, I am still in disbelief at how well Nintendo Switch emulation is. Like for starters, I wouldn't have expected the Switch emulator to be this good with hardware that's still being sold by Nintendo to this day. Now to be clear, I'm not saying emulation is perfect right now, nor am I saying it's better than running on actual hardware. If you want to play Nintendo Switch games, I would recommend just buying a Nintendo Switch. I'm just saying it's amazing how close we are to actual hardware. And for some games with performance issues such as Link's Awakening, there are mods out there that can remedy those issues. Switch emulation being this good is a testament to the entire emulation community coming together and getting this stuff up and running. Emulation devs are truly the unsung heroes of the gaming industry. Bravo guys, you guys deserve all the praise. Of course, emulation is just one small part of what the Steam Deck is capable of once you leave the Steam ecosystem. Alright, so let's talk other game stores. Last year, I put out a couple of videos of other game stores running on Linux, framing it as a Steam Deck what if video. And those videos are outdated. So how does Epic actually run on Steam Deck? Well, by using the Hero Games Launcher, you can just download and install it. Liam over at Gaming on Linux has a great installation guide for Hero Games Launcher, as well as the Hero Bash script, which allows you to add games to Steam. So what's the verdict on Hero Games Launcher? It's pretty sick, honestly. First and foremost, it's an Epic Games Launcher. I know there's quite a few people that have issues with Epic. I personally have issues with Epic too. Though if you're taking the free games every now and then and you're not paying them, then this is a launcher that you can use to play those games on your Steam Deck. Secondly, Hero Games Launcher is also a GOG launcher. Yes, you can download and install GOG games directly, and it manages Proton prefixes and all that stuff in case there's no native Linux version. So playing these epic games on your Steam Deck seems very sacrilegious, and in many cases it is, but it works. A lot of high profile indie games also have native Linux ports, and guess what epic games doesn't have? Native Linux versions of these games. It's also worth mentioning that just because a game on Steam has a verification rating that's either verified or playable, that doesn't mean the same applies to the Epic version of the game. Case in point being Celeste. The Steam version of Celeste has a native Linux version that works perfectly. And as you can see here, the Epic version is stuck trying to run the Windows version of the game. And guess what? The game doesn't run anyways. So if you have an Epic copy of Celeste, do yourself a favor and buy it on Steam instead, or buy it on itch.io. The itch.io version works, and it's also a Linux version. Of course, not all Epic games are broken this way. Like Damon X Machina works just fine. What's the lesson we have to learn here? Well, the lesson is that not all Steam verification ratings extend to other versions of the game. So we've talked about running Epic and GOG games, but what about other storefronts? What about EA and Ubisoft titles? Those work, but due to the limited storage I have on my Steam Deck, I'm not going to install those. And honestly, there's not a whole lot from EA or Ubisoft that I really want to play on my Steam Deck. At least not currently. What I am going to tell you though is that there are plenty of people that have installed Ubisoft Connect and Origin on their Steam Decks. YouTubers even. So if you want footage of Ubisoft Connect or EA Origin running, I will check out their videos after watching this one. So it's come to my attention that I forgot to mention this very important detail. You can add games as non-Steam games to Steam, and it'll show up in the game UI. This also has the added benefit of having these games recognize the Steam Deck's own controller. Because just running the executable outside of Steam and trying to use your controller to play these games doesn't work as expected. Yes, this also means you need to add your emulators to Steam to be able to configure the controls properly. You can also add individual ROMs as their own Steam entries, either manually or through a program called Steam ROM Manager. And would you look at that? It all just looks so nice when you put in the effort. If you go through with adding each individual ROM as its own game, 
You can set custom power profiles per game rather than per emulator. And custom controls, of course, if you're into that kind of stuff. So yeah, emulators, cool. Alternative storefronts, cool. But what kind of a gaming PC would this be if you could mod any games? It's a good thing I put out three videos about modding games on your Steam Deck. One about generally modding games, and one about modding Fallout New Vegas. Oh yeah, and Breath of the Wild, I can't forget that. As I've stated before, modding is a PC gaming institution. And given the sheer amount of power you have with the Steam Deck, as well as having a full fat desktop environment, you could mod on the Steam Deck, and you could have a grand old time with it. But enough about gaming. What about non-gaming applications for the Steam Deck? What can the Steam Deck do? Anything a PC can do, the Steam Deck can do. I mean, it's a PC. I won't focus too hard on the non-gaming things that you can do on deck. Because I'm assuming if you're gonna buy a Steam Deck, you're probably gonna buy it to play video games on. Or you're a filthy scalper. But you can do whatever you want with your Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is also a tinkerer's dream. So aside from Steam Deck's own settings and its own UI, you can also change the Linux desktop. You can make much more extensive changes over with the desktop environment, such as these few screenshots that I pulled off of Google. And yes, this is like ricing your car, except you're ricing your desktop instead. This was all done in KDE Plasma. And in theory, this should be possible on the Steam Deck as well. Though I don't really have a lot of experience, nor do I have the artistic vision to really rice my desktop. Look, you can even see that the layout's changed entirely. With the middle dock, it more resembles Mac OS than Windows. And if you're looking for modifications to the Steam UI, then look no further than the plugins loader. Essentially, plugins for the Steam UI itself. Spotify controls, custom themes, more extensive performance tweaking, that's a thing too. I'll do a separate video on this as this is a pretty extensive topic at hand. No promises on when that'll come out though. So what are my thoughts about leaving the Steam Deck's UI and diving headfirst into a Linux desktop? What's my experience with playing non-Steam games, whether it's from a different storefront or you just download it straight from the internet or whatever? And what about emulated titles? all of which have been very pleasant experiences. Now this needs to be said, but not all non-Steam games work on the Steam Deck. And unlike regular Steam games, there's no handy dandy guide telling you which games work, which games don't work, and which games work with a little bit of jank. And if you have to choose between buying a Steam copy of a game and buying a non-Steam copy of a game, you should 100% buy the Steam version of a game. But if you already own a game on a different storefront, depending on the game, it may not work on the Steam Deck, such as the Epic version of Celeste. That doesn't work on the Steam Deck. But the itch.io version works on the Steam Deck. And if you're wondering why that's the case, well, I explained it in this video right here. Go check it out when you're done watching the review. Also, anti-cheat games outside of Steam. Abandon all hope here. Anti-cheat working with Proton is mostly tied to Steam. So if you're gonna play Apex Legends, don't install Origin and play it that way. Install Steam and play it that way instead. As for games that aren't on Steam that also use anti-cheat, like Fortnite, well, I guess you'll just have to play a different game then. What about games you can't get in launchers? Like, you know, Dojin software or indie demos or whatnot. Those will work on Steam Deck too. Man, this feels like the old days of r slash Nintendo Switch where everyone would make posts about how this game or that game or whatever game is perfect for the Nintendo Switch. It just feels like I'm regurgitating it and it feels like I'm just saying that over and over again, but for the Steam Deck. It's crazy because you don't need to port beg for a vast majority of games on PC. Except for those with anti-cheat, of course. So yes, a wide variety of non-Steam games playable on your Steam Deck. Kind of wild, but what about emulation? Emulation is a near perfect use case for the Steam Deck. Valve certainly doesn't advertise it. The Steam Deck is one of the best emulation devices you can buy to this day. It's more than capable of handling many, many, many generations of systems. And as for modern systems to emulate such as the Wii U, the Wii U works just fine. The Switch works just fine, though some higher end games may have frame rate issues. Same deal with the PS3 emulator. No portable Metal Gear Solid 4 anytime soon. You want to play Steam games? Get the Steam Deck. You want to play non-Steam games? Get the Steam Deck. You want to emulate? Get the Steam Deck. If you just like playing games in general, get the Steam Deck. You won't regret it. So if you like my content, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, join my Discord server, and also enable notifications.